Why don't you put your hands together for our Aldermanic candidate for the 15th Ward, Mr. Yanner, right now. Well, for, first and foremost, I want to thank everyone for making time to come this morning, this afternoon. My name is Rafael Yanez. I am a candidate of the 15th Ward. I was uh, born here in Chicago, but I grew up in Mexico. I came back to Chicago at the age of nine years old uh, in the southwest of uh, Chicago. The first week when I arrived from Mexico, I was asked a question by a student. That question was, what you be about? And I didn't speak English, so I didn't understand what he was saying, right? But soon, soon I learned how segregated and divided our city is. I learned that at a very early age. And so I challenged, I, I, had, I had to face the challenges of going from one neighborhood to another, being asked, what are you doing in this park? What do you mean, what am I doing? I wanna play basketball, right? Being punched in the face, being chased around. And so those are the challenges that I was facing, right? And even also being stopped by the police and you don't belong here, you should go back to Mexico and comments like that, right? I never thought that I, I will become a police officer, but I am a police officer. I'm very proud to be a police officer because I knew I was able to make a difference. I started working in Inglewood. I've been a police officer for 11 years. After working in Inglewood, I went to a unit where I went around the city. I was working at the, at the uh, areas where there were shootings and just getting information on the conflicts between gangs and went back to Inglewood to run the prevent, preventive programs. So I had eight officers that I will send out to the schools to go back and teach the officer-friendly program from kindergarten all the way to third grade. We started mentoring programs. We started a program in Harper High School and Hope High School. I was teaching in Arrow and Good Law and O2. And all the 37 schools that, that we have in Inglewood, I was there teaching a program with six student, six uh, officers that I was uh, assigning. I took advantage of a program in the police department where if you wanna go to school, they pay you to go to school. I remember a counselor telling me that I never, I never had the grace to go to college. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, right now, I, I got a master's degree in public safety administration. I got a doctor's degree in education. I'm also a professor in criminal justice. And this just to say that those conversations we have growing up many times are not positive, right? It's not very encouraging. But I use those conversations to motivate me, to push me to aim high and to come back and to make sure that we continue serving. I started a not-for-profit organization eight years ago with seven kids, seven kids that were getting in trouble a lot. We started a soccer program in back of the yards. Well, last summer, I'm proud to say that we have over 300 kids involved in that program, you know? Thank you. So the issues that we have in the 15 ward and across the city are very clear. This administration, Rahm Emanuel closed over 50 schools across the city. He closed over six mental health clinics across the city. He continues to use the TIF funding as a sludge fund to finance private projects downtown. There's a loophole for big corporations. They're getting richer and richer, and our communities are suffering more and more, and that needs to stop. I'm running for the 15 ward not because I'm looking for a title, not because I'm looking for a salary, but because I'm looking for a way to serve my community. My I have two teenagers. One is here, my son, 16 years old. He's a sophomore in high school. I'm proud to say that both of my kids were born and raised in this community, right? When I say this community, you know, many times we, we put those boundaries, we put, put those invisible walls. You know, Englewood in this side, back of the yards in that side. I'm running to represent everyone. I'm not running to represent one corner. I'm ru running to represent everyone that needs my assistance. I will be there. So my, my platform is very clear. My platform is very clear. And it's very, very unique as, uh, as my opponent, right? My opponent continues to get uh, funding from the same people that oppose increasing the minimum wage. 
We have to increase the minimum wage. I'm pushing for $15, and here's why. Because that will put more money in the pockets of our family. We have over 2,000 abandoned buildings in Inglewood. How can we expect to be able to buy a house when we're getting paid a minimum salary that is not a living wage? We have to. <laughs> Those cameras are a tax for the low income communities. $100, $200 for a millionaire downtown is nothing. $100, $200 for our working families, that's one, two, sometimes three days of work, and that needs to stop now. What, what I'm proposing is to ban those cameras. My opponent is saying, no, let's keep them there. Also, I'm in favor of participatory budget. Why? Because it's very clear our, our communities have been left behind. Our communities are not participating in demo on a democratic process. He's afraid of including a participatory pr uh, process, a uh, program where we allocate the funding. Why? Because he's claiming that we're gonna pin one community against another. Well, guess what? That's the democratic process that we need to implement to give the boys back to the community. Also, the school closings, right? We need to make sure that we have an elected school board. Why? because the elected school board are the same people that close over 50 schools. The elected school board are the same people that increase our property taxes. Rahm Emanuel is claiming that that didn't happen. Well, guess what? That happened. And we, not, we need to be truthful to our residents. Property taxes already went up, and, they, and, and the uh, Board of Education the, that represents uh, the board right now, they did it. So we, if they have the power to raise taxes, we ought to be electing them. And so I, su I support having an elected school board. My opponent, opponent doesn't. Also, sales tax. I oppose to increasing the sales tax because that means the next time we go buy milk, it's going to be more expensive. My opponent says raise the sales tax. Also, there's a, a, a project that they wanted to bring here in Inglewood, in West Inglewood, in the 15th Ward, where residents were concern. Why? Because they wanted to use Western Inglewood as a dumping ground to bring it to, to, to be used as a, as a private prison. You know, I heard the community, I got involved in, with the community, the community said we don't want, we don't want a private prison in West Inglewood. He said, no, I spoke to the administration, it's good for the community. So my question is this, who is he listening to? I know who am I listening to, and I know who am I planning to listen. I'm planning to be part of a movement that involves the community. That's why I decided to run. That's why I'm here, and that's why he's not here. So I want to thank you for your time, and I know there's going to be some questions, you know. I'll give Mr. Yanez another hand, Mr. Rafael Yanez, candidate for the 15th Ward, all the men of grace. And uh, now, we're gonna have him have a few Q&As with you all because we got some questions that you wrote on your note cards and sent in, and we do wanna ask him some of those questions, and I have some questions that we wanna ask you as well. So, let me make sure your mic is on. First question for you, candidate Yanez. In your opinion, what is most good and bad about Inglewood and how do you plan to increase those good things and decrease those bad things? Can you limit your reply to at least two minutes? Well, uh, what's good, I'll start with the bad. The bad is that we haven't had representation. The bad is that we have, uh, we have policies that are discriminatory policies and our leaders are looking the other way. The bad is that we have uh, institutional racism and our leaders are looking the other way. The bad is that we have economic disparity and our leaders are looking the other way. That's what's bad. What's good is that Inglewood has heart and passion and has resiliency. We come from a community that has fought battles. Battles of, they go back to slavery, they go back to Jim Crow, they go back to uh, policies 
of uh, discriminatory housing. These are the battles and these are the, the giants where we stand. And so what I believe is that we have an opportunity in front of us, an opportunity to create some change, an opportunity to give to our children a baton, a baton of hope, love, and faith. And that's where, what's good in Inglewood, and that's what's good in this movement. Uh, next question, uh, how do you feel about the school closings in Inglewood, and what do you do, what do you think should be done with those buildings, uh, in your opinion? I, in the 15th Ward is one school closed, across the Inglewood is six schools closed. No other community in the city of Chicago had more schools closed than Inglewood. No other community. And that hasn't really been highlighted as it should. What I'm planning to do first and foremost is include the community in this process. Because I could read all the books in the world and I can make up all these models, but the reality is that we need to come to the table and ask you, what do you want? How do, what do you want to see in that building, right? Because as an alderman, what I'm doing is an advocate. I'm going to push for that. I'm going to fight for that. But I need you. I need you to fight with me, and I need you in this process. So I'm not going to bring a model and saying that this is, I mean, I could say, well, let's bring a, a golf course. Does, is that what you want in the community? No, right? So I want you in that table. I want you to be making those decisions and help me make the right decisions and help me make me accountable because you know what? We're all making tax, we're all paying taxes. And you know what? If you're not seeing results, you ought to be firing me if I get elected because that's what we need to do. Next question, uh, how do you feel about the relationship between the police and the community? And uh, how do you feel that we can fix or renew these relationships between the two? I spend, I spend my life working to build those relationships. I'm very proud of my work. Uh, I believe that we have a tremendous opportunity to do that. My, my biggest joy is to be in those classrooms to be working with the young people, to being doing those uh, restorative justice programs, to being doing the peace programs, right? We have to plant seeds. The reality is that the mayor appoints the superintendent. The police department shouldn't be an occupied force. The police department should work with the community. I believe in CAPS. I believe in building relationships. I believe in building trust, and I believe that in order to do that, we need a new mayor. We need a mayor that understands the issues that we're facing. Next question. How do you think that we can increase the lack of employment in the Inglewood community? And how do you plan on encouraging big business to bring their companies to the Inglewood community to create more jobs? Between 2001 and 2011, there was over 50,000 created jobs created in the city of Chicago. 80% of those jobs were for sub, uh, people that live in the suburbs, 80% of them. And a lot of that money came from TIF money, from your tax dollars. So in reality, all, everyone in here were paying to create jobs for people that live in the suburbs. And you know what? The reality is that that money, those, that TIF money, is continuing to be used as a slush fund to, to finance private projects downtown, to make the richer richer, and to exclude our communities. So that needs to stop. Again, it goes back to having representation, having a mayor that understands that we need to use that money and make sure that we impact the small businesses as well. Make sure that if there's going to be projects in our communities, they ought to be thinking about hiring locally. They ought to be thinking about doing trainings to have our young people in the labor force, to have our young people in the, in the global economy. This city cannot be global when we forget our neighborhoods. That's the bottom line. It can never be global when our neighborhoods are suffering. So we need to make sure that we bring dollars to our neighborhoods.
uh, next question. If we, the people, were to get you elected, how do you plan on distributing those new incoming jobs to people in the communities? As I mentioned before, I believe in the participatory process. So what I'm planning to do is I want to do a steering committee, a steering committee with, with uh, the different issues that, that, we wanted to, that we want to address in the community. This process is going to be fair. This process is going to be just. And this process is going to be driven by the community. The community, the leaders in the community, whoever wants to be part of this process will have a seat in that table. Next question. Do you support the use of traffic camera, uh, red light cameras as well as uh, speeding cameras? And if you do not, what is your uh, plan to make a difference in changing the law concerning these devices? As I mentioned, I, I'm in, uh, in agreement to, uh, to support banning those cameras. Once again, it's the regressive uh, policies where it continues to nickeling and diming our neighborhoods. And uh, basically, we, we're, the administration, the current administration is looking to get money from our neighborhoods, from our working class neighborhoods, to finance projects. And so I'm planning to ban that project. I don't think it's, uh, according to, to a lot of the studies that we've heard, uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't created a, a safety measure, right, where, where it has reduced uh, crashes where it has reduced accidents and that was the whole purpose behind that project to reduce uh, crashes and, and again to to uh, to have that uh, deliver in that way but it hasn't so I'm supporting banning that the cameras okay. uh, what do you plan to do specifically about the uh, ever-present and increasing gang and drug problem in the Inglewood community what I, have, what I have always mentioned is that we have to go to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is that we don't have jobs, right? The, the root of the problem is that our schools are underfund, under, underfunded. The root of the problem is that we don't have programs, real programs. I'm not just talking about mentoring programs. I'm talking about programs, internship programs. Programs that are, connect, that are gonna connect our young people to real jobs. Real jobs that have a living wage, you know? So that's what, that's what I'm planning to do as alderman. I've done it in, for eight years, working in this non-for-profit organization as a volunteer. So if I done it for eight years as a volunteer, what can I do as a government official? We could do a lot more. With so much gun violence going on in, across the nation and in our city, but a lot, mostly in Inglewood, how do you plan on changing or reducing the gun violence in the Inglewood community? The question is, what happened? What happened before that young man ha had a gun in, 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 in his or her hand, right? I mean, again, once again, it goes back to, to the root of the problem, having a comprehensive approach making sure that we have good schools, making sure that we have jobs, making sure that we have a, an economic engine that creates opportunities for employment in our neighborhoods, that creates opportunities for housing opportunities, first-time buyers, rent-to-buy programs, living wage, let's increase that minimum wage. It's a snowball, right? I mean, this, all, this is all connected. And once again, we, we uh, in, in, in City Hall, in Washington, very often, we ignore that problem. Let's go to the root of the problem because it's not a lock them up approach. It's bringing resources to our community. Our seniors are often indicated as one of our forgotten aspects of society. How do you plan on making them feel important and what plans do you have for them in the Inglewood community? I mentioned before that we stand on the shoulders of giants and our, our seniors are the giants. I think about my grandparents and I think about the, the knowledge that they bring, right? So what I, what I hope to do is to really 
uh, create a committee where we can connect our young people and our seniors and where we can create an environment where we can learn from each other. I mean, this is nothing new. This has started before, right? But the reality is that we have a responsibility to make sure that our seniors are safe. Our seniors should feel safe in our community. Our seniors, they committed to improving and to working and to raising our family. So they, we owe a lot to them and they have to be at the front of everything that we do. So that's what I'm planning to do. A lot of people have moved out of the Inglewood community and Chicago as a whole. How do you plan on servicing the remaining residents in the 15th Ward? What I want to, we have a big battle. What I want to ask you is to join this movement. Help me fight for you. Let's fight together. I want you to stay in, in Inglewood and help me make the 15th Ward, the greater Inglewood community, the city of Chicago, the city that needs to be. And I need your help. I'm willing to work with you. I'm willing to, to uh, be involved in, in the ideas that you have. I want to fight for you in city council, in the state, in, the, in, in Washington, because the, the alderman is not only con shouldn't be only concerned about concerns in the local level. We have other issues that impacts, for example, housing. There's some houses in, in here that are owned by Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. We gotta be thinking about how, how should we include the congressman, right, in this, in this picture, in this conversation. How should we include, include the senators, right? So we have to lobby and we have to always be willing to be sitting and encouraging people to participate in this process. So we have a lot of work. We have a lot of work, but again, I'm looking at it as a perspective of hope, love, and faith. And we have that. You know? How and what will you do to help felons or people who deserve another chance uh, find work in the Inglewood community again? I'm a big supporter of reentry programs. Uh, there are several organizations here that are doing a tremendous job already. Uh, Teamwork Inglewood, Johnny Ablo, he's a very good friend of mine. Uh, so we need to make sure that we continue to bring funding for those programs to make sure that we have uh, programs available. And again, I mean, the state, the governor, is. Uh, the conversation is that he wants to cut a lot of the programs that are safety net and our programs that are helping uh, our, our young people and, and re-entry programs, right? So again, once again, we, need, we have a big fight ahead of us and I need to uh, get involved in this process as just as I have been doing it and for my adult life. I, I believe in, in, in opportunities of change. I believe in, uh, in giving people the opportunity to, to go back to, uh, to restoring lives, to, to healing families and we need to make sure that we bring that to, to the conversation all the time. Okay. Seeing that there's a heavy reliance on residential property taxes in the city, do you believe these taxes should be reduced? And if so, how do you believe that we can achieve this? Harold Washington uh, had a program where, where it was a, a progressive approach. It was based on uh, income, right? You pay property taxes based on income. And uh, we have to be looking at uh, whether our property taxes and again, the value of the properties that we, that we have currently, is that, does that connect with uh, how much are we paying? So again, uh, I wanna be involved in this uh, conversation. I wanna make sure that, that our community is represented, that every decision that is made, that every policy that is passed, that every vote I make, it's for the interest of our community. And that's where, what I owe my allegiance. I owe my allegiance to the residents. And that's where I stand. Do you attend CAPS meetings? And if so, what beat are you on? Well, be before I became a police officer, I was a beat facilitator. Uh, 
in 2001, one of the kids that was helping us clean was murdered. Rene Guillen was a seventh grader who was getting community service hours to graduate. And uh, I'm very familiar with CAPS. I'm very familiar with the effectiveness of uh, this type of projects. I became a police officer working in the CAPS office. That's where I met many of you. And uh, I'm very proud to say that I'm still involved in CAPS and I was running a, a CAPS program in 24 neighborhoods in the city of Chicago. And so that's what I, that, that skill, that knowledge that I, that I, ha that I have, I wanna bring it home. I wanna bring it to the 15th Ward and once again to the city of Chicago and the surrounding communities. What is your plan to provide jobs for youth in the Inglewood community? We need to make sure that we bring uh, back uh, the summer programs, right? I mean, we, I remember when I was in high school participating in the summer program, and I was working at the time uh, for, for this, uh, the, um, it was a city, a city uh, department we were painting the fire hydrants in the summer, right? So I, I believe that the, the jobs that we create in the summer should be really attached to real skills, to real opportunities for our young people, you know? Can we trust you to represent us in City Hall if, you, if we elect you as our alderman in the 15th Ward? I always say that we build trust by showing results. I've shown results. It's public record. You could look my name. You could ask people. You could ask them about my integrity, about my values. I've been with my wife for over 16 years. I bring faith to this conversation. I, I believe that uh, this is a ministry. You know, the Lord has given me an opportunity to serve, you know, and, I, and, and so what I ask you to do is to give me a chance to give me an opportunity to, to show you results. That's what I'm here, to, to ask you to vote for me, to elect me to represent you in city council, and to get in my team and fight with me. Those are all the questions I'm gonna read from the note cards. Uh, I want you to give Mr. Rafael Yanez another hand. And at this time, I'm gonna open the floor to you, Mr. Yanez, uh, 10, 15 minutes, however long you would like to give your closing remarks and you know, let the people know why you are the right candidate for Alderman in the 15th Ward. Once again, I mentioned uh, the battle that we have ahead of us. This is a battle of de democracy. This is a battle because many people in power believe that we don't have the understanding of being involved in a participatory process. We have a battle, very clear battle. We have a fight against uh, corporations that believe that it's okay to, to pay us a wage that is not livable. We need to increase the minimum wage and we have, once that battle is won, we need to continue. We need to elect a local school council. We need to make sure that we bring opportunities to our neighborhoods. We need to make sure that we have an opportunity to be part in the table where, where we decide, where the residents decide the decisions that are being made. Also, we need to be, once again, inclusive because the aldermen shouldn't be just focusing in one area and neglecting other area. We have an opportunity in front of us, an opportunity to create change. And I believe they have the skills, the will, the heart, and the passion to make that happen. I wanna thank you for your time and whether I win or lose, I will continue to serve. Thank you for your time. We'd like to thank uh, Mr. Yanez, Rafael Yanez for coming in again. I know you can do it better than I give him a better round of applause than that.